All right. Now, um, I also want to talk to you about aged care for a second, Holly, because I know that there are always individual examples of things that end up on the wrong side of things. But we've had royal commissions, we've had TV programs, we've had the pressure from uh, the customers, the families, all the rest of it. And yet again, another example today about an uh, aged care home in the north of Sydney, which is failing to address its compliance issues, right? Lots of different things from about uh, the way that medication is working to food, safety, all the rest of it here. I don't understand, Holly, how the law mm. is not clearer in Australia that if you mm. require people to sell their house to live in your care, that when you get this wrong, you've got 30 days or you are deregistered. You are gone. This is not something where you can have 700 warnings and 500 tries. People have to literally... I mean, the way we all know how it works. We all work our backsides off to have a house that one day we might be able to sell to play money kaplunk so we can have a comfortable end towards our life. But it's failing too many times, all sides of politics. Can we change the damn law that says you start to get this wrong, you lose the right to take people's entire wealth in exchange for care? Oh, anyone that's got parents in aged care will tell you the cost of putting parents into those sorts of facilities up front is enormous. And we know, though, that the staff that work in these facilities are underpaid in many instances. They're also very low skilled at times, uh, but there is a shortage of them across the board. And if we really want to have a look at Mr Albanese, they were promising that there were going to be nurses in every aged care facility. But at the same time, they're now backtracking saying, well, actually, we're going to give lots of exemptions to different yep. aged care homes because they can't attract the staff. So there are really big problems in the staffing side of this and things need to be done more long term to ensure that we are getting enough people working in these facilities that these, you know, these people are looked after. It's horrible. I mean, I've got a mother in aged care and the staff are wonderful and the facility's lovely, but, you know, it costs a lot of money to go in and you pay something every week and, you know, it's an ongoing mm. thing. So I don't know where the money's going because uh, it's obviously not going into paying the staff, but the people whose families are in there are paying an awful lot of money for the spot. But, I mean, Stephen, it, it, it is one of the biggest bets that we make as people about what we're going to do uh, with the people that we love or what we're going to do with ourselves. Um, Victoria, of course, with those industrial manslaughter laws, say that, you know, the, the board of a company would be held responsible for something that happens on a building site kilometres and kilometres away. How the hell is this not the case for the people who run the aged care sector in this country? Look, I thought Holly made some really good points. Uh, and what we're seeing in the aged care sector is a sector under enormous stress. I think there was a report out in the last few weeks which showed that the vast majority of aged care companies are losing money at the moment. Uh, Holly made very good points about there's, there's a sh total shortage of staff. They haven't been able to pay the, uh, the workers enough to attract people in. COVID put, you know, unbearable pressure on the aged care system. It, it, it failed uh, the test. Uh, and we saw many tragedies. So this is a sector that the government has put forward a plan. It hasn't been able to get it all through. There's a fair work case test uh, for uh, aged care workers. Uh, the government are waiting to see how that goes. It's supported a substantial increase. We're waiting to see that. Then the reforms that have been put in place following COVID, and a lot of these came through recommendations, they're starting to be rolled out. Uh, but it is very disappointing. It's very disappointing uh, to see ongoing reports. But that, that major report released recently showed that the entire sector is in the red. Mm. Well, my thing is, is that if you want to see some serious changes, apart from obviously people taking care of their own family members, which seems to sharpen people's notice, a bit more uh, compulsion here on the people that, again, you've got to sell your entire house to pay for this stuff and you don't get much left over at all. Mm. All right, guys, thank you very much, Senator, former Senator. Enjoy your boys' toys at Avalon the next few days, Stephen.